Welcome to Working with Mad Mapper 3.6.5. Now I've got a simple scene here. I just want to show you one of the really cool features of this new version, and that's particularly the scene cues down the bottom. So this has been around for a little while since um, 3 has come out, version 3, and there's lots of other things I won't cover. Now I just wanted to show you this because I think it's one of my favorite. So here's a scene. It's built up. And I can actually just click on to another scene I've created. And now it just adds in the other features I've put together. Or I can go really crazy. And here I am just onto the third scene. And I can actually animate the quads completely to other places. So wow, we can really play with the illusion of the uh, spatial augmented reality. So what I want to do with this project is actually just take you through in the creation of putting this together. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to come back and here's a few files. I've just got a couple of video files. Video file A, B, or sorry, B, and the MadMapper file that, that was used to put this together. And then I've just got a background scene. Now it's great to actually put this together at the scene or the location you're on, but often that's pretty impossible. So the thing you will need to do is simply just go through and... Um, shoot with a photograph um, just to get that image and actually bring it in as a background image. Now what we've got at the top here is we've got our quads. We've got a whole range of quads. Each time you click on them, you've got all sorts of effects to play with the color, to reverse them, to mesh warp them, to mask them, even soft edge. I'm not covering all these things. just want to get this thing working quite nicely. So there's the quads. The next thing, this is when we're going into more DMX type um, things, so putting things together with LED lights, etc. So I'm not going to worry about that, but the third one is something really important. That's the projector that you're going to use. Now if I click on my main projector, basically I've just got a dummy one set up, which is just the computer here. Now you can have as many projectors as you like, essentially if you want to project um, a lot of quads through different scenes. So I've just got my computer here. I just really want to show how this goes together. But imagine you can put a 360 scene together. Now we've also got things for putting um, your queues together. So we can actually schedule a queue. Basically, um, with this, we can actually basically click on there and decide when we want this to run. Now I'm not going to go into this one easy either, but it gives you an idea of some of the things in this program. And this is new and I really have to start playing with a lot of these things. I haven't been doing this for a while, so it's pretty exciting to get back into it. And just at the end here, we've just got things we can play with our level. We can sort of do a fade in effect and fade out, but you might do this with the video. Uh, particularly if you've got a range of videos and you're linking up between the queues, which is down here on the bottom. So the other thing that we've got here, we've got an input box where we put things together. This is the input and the output. I can actually just have just the input there, and I can zoom up, zoom down, or reduce it, or just fit to size, or just fit the whole area that way as well. But I'll just zoom on that one down a little bit, um, and then I can go into just straight output size. So we can also reverse them, so if I click here, you see they're one on top of each other, or go back to side by side again. Right over on the right hand side here, we've got all our effects from generators to materials, to ISS, to Quartz Composer, where we can bring in some amazing things, and then we have our images and movies that we might be bringing in as well. So there you go, and here's the two movies that are in there. And I've got the still image as well. And then we can play with speeds and effects. Up in here, there's all sorts of live effects that we can play with, um, wavelength for sound, files, all sorts of things. So there's a ton that you can do in the program, and it's actually really quite easy to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this file. I'm not going to save that, nope. And I'm just going to, with Mad Mapper, just bring it back up and we're going to start a brand new file. So here's my images and I'm going to create a brand new file that's going to just be there. So let's go and bring up the MadMapper software and bring in a new file. So MadMapper just up here and here's my new file. Nothing in here. It comes with its preset of uh, images, uh, images that can be used but just down here we don't have any videos. 
So as you see, you've already got lots of things to play with text. And I'm not covering half of things, anywhere near half what's in here, but it just gives you an idea. No cues down the bottom. Let's just go into number one here, and I'm just going to bring in a, a quad. Okay, so I brought a new quad. Here's my quad. Now I can la label this. I'm not bringing in many, so I'm not going to worry about this too much, but I can just double click on this and call it quad one, quad two, or maybe something other than quad one. Um, but um, left hand image, um, house image, um, movie, quad, whatever you want. But I'm just going to leave that just to keep it nice and simple because I'm going to keep this scene quite simple to work with. So anyway, um, we've just got one quad here. I might just reduce that down a little bit. So nothing in here because we don't have any content that's brought into it at this stage. So I'm going to have to go through and import a video. So just before I get into building this too much, what I want to do is just come back down to the video area here. And let's find the videos, which is uh, just down here, or movies. Now, it has siphon too when you're bringing in things like interactive animation, particularly with something like character animator, or you're doing games, or you're doing um, uh, things for modulate that you want to bring through using siphon. But in this case, I'm just going to click on add a movie, and I'm going to find my movie, and this time I want my eyes. So there's my eye movie, it should be coming up, and I'll just go open. And there's my eye movie. So basically with this quad here, I can just go through, select it and double click on it, and, and it comes. So what you do on the left hand side, this is the input, this is the output, how you view it. So I can just go through and decide on what I want there, and I'm going to make a selected area of that particular quad. This one on this side is where I will actually fit it to the background. Now I can might move this just to make this a little bit smaller at the beginning. And I'll just fit that so it's nice and small. And then basically I can just go and shape this up. Now before I worry about shaping this up, what am I shaping it to? And this, I'm just going to move this out of the way just for a little bit to get out of the way here. We need to actually go to our projector and for a start understand the size of that projector. Well we had it at 1440 by 900 I think in this case. We can have any size we want. But anyway, what I'm going to do with the projector we can size it down here. Oh no, this was a 1920 with this file by, so it's HD. I'm going to come down and where it says background image, of course there's none here at the moment, 100% tr transparency or no transparency at all at this stage, but there's no image. So click here. I want to add in the image that I'm going to use to map it to. I'm not at the scene, so I want my image that I've shot or put together just so I know what I'm mapping to. So I'll put my scene background here and just go open. And there it is, it fills the scene. Now this is just for the projector view. I can zoom this up a little bit bigger. But it's not for playing around because we'll be changing the projector size. We come back to our quads here. So I'll just, I'm just going to leave that alone now and come back here. But remember you can have a lot more projectors in there if you want. So now I can actually move this in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start shaping it to how I want this to fit. So I'm just getting that fitting into each of the quads there. Now at any stage, we could, of course, we can move this or reduce it in size or add it uh, up in size or just to fit it, um, well, in this case, to, just to the quad that's there. So this fits it to the actual scene. So I've got my first image in here. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to just create a second image. And I'm going to use another movie. So let's go and click here. So I'm adding a second movie in here. And I'll use the dragon one this time. And I'll bring this in. Hold it just before I do that. Well, I'll tell you what, I will bring it in oh, um, to make sure it's in here. But I'm just going to cancel it for a bit. But what do we need? Well, we're going to replace the quad here. We need another quad. Now, we can have quads of different angles. We can have line effects and animate those as well, even 3D. And then we can put things into a folder. I'm just keeping this really simple, just to give you the basics of how you can put something together pretty cool, and I'm just going to stay with quads just for the time being. So this is my second quad. I could label this the dragon one, but I'm not going to. But I've got some black edges here, so for a start I'm going to come down here. And really, um, I just want the dragon. Now I can zoom this up, so I could click on the input here, and then just make that really big, so I can see what I'm doing at any stage. 
but I just want to get my dragon shape in here. And um, great, I've got that. So I'll now go to um, both views and just zoom that down or just zoom it to fit. And I've got my quad in here. And now, of course, I want to take this and I'm going to fit it just to the back wall. I'm just going to fit it in there and just fit it in there like so and like so. So I've got two video formats in here. Now, what we've got up here, we can snap it all with the magnet on. It's going to sort of snap when we start putting quads and bits together as well. But um, so you can turn that on or off to see what you're doing. But essentially, that's just setting it nicely in there. And it will sort of snap, particularly when we put another quad next to it. Um, speaking of another quad, I'm now going to um, make sure I just save the project. And I'll call it uh, just whatever you want to call it. But I'm just going to call it test2. And I was going to save into that same folder. Now I'm going to bring in another quad. So I'm going to click on the quads here. And basically, I've got my third quad here, but I don't want this image in here. In fact, I can turn these off at any stage as well. So I can only review the one that I want. But uh, if we just turn all those back on, just make sure I'm on this quad. Which is the should be the top one quad through I brought in there. I'm going to use an effect and a sound effect in this one. So I'm going to use wavelength here. So I'm going to just double click on that, and I've brought that in. Now with this wavelength, as I talk, you see that it's actually making an effect. So a lot of these things you had to do through other tools, and now it's all in Mad Mapper, which is really pretty fantastic. So I might just make that a little bit thicker. So there it is, thicker. I can smooth it, um, time scale it more, do a whole lot of things with it. And you see there's a whole lot of more effects down here at the bottom and speed, etc. as well. I'm not going to touch those, I just want to get them in there. But I don't want it to be totally opaque. So what I can come up to is where it says blending mode here, I'm just going to go to add and now it's over the top. So you also guessed it. Um, if I just zoom that down, let's see what are we getting there. Right, we've got our quad. What I want to do now is I just want to shape that. So it's just going to fall in and just go to the wall in this situation. And I might just go into this bit here. And I might just take into this bit here. Of course, the other thing I could do is I could put it on top of other images as well if I wanted to. In fact, what I might do is I might just duplicate this quad. So if I click on this, and um, just with Command D for duplication, you can duplicate it. And it's quad four now. And see it's lined up here as well. But what I'm going to do with this particular one is I'm going to move it right across the whole scene and place it like so, in fact, I'll get it right to this point here. So it's really starting to play with the illusion. And what I want to do is I want to play around with some colors. So I'm going to just change the color there. So there we see we're getting a color effect as well. And thickness, I might make that a lot thicker and less smooth. Change the time scale. And just to make it sure it's just a little bit different. So really, really simple files here. but. Um, almost done with what we're doing before we add in a few more effects, but um, we've got our first image here, and of course I'll, I'll make sure I save it again. And right down the bottom, I'm now going to click on my scene and just go plus. So this is scene one, and this is holding it as in scene one as I want it. Now we can create as many scenes as we want. I'm just going to create two. In our initial startup, I showed you three, but I want to show you how this works. The other thing is I'm going to just click on this and make it three seconds and hit the return key. Now this works on PC or Mac, the software, so um, whatever version you're using, it's going to be fine. So I've got my scene here. What I'm going to do now is I'm not going to do anything to adding a scene in there. And this is the trick of this. Don't add any scene in yet. You have to set your scene before you add it. So what I'm going to do now is just using the same tools I've got here is I'm going to, for a start, click one more quad. So I'll click one more quad in here. 
and I'm going to take this one all the way down to the bottom and what I want is put a different scene in here so I'm going to put uh, this QB effect and with that I'm going to take this uh, just down to the bottom like so take it through here and all the way through the bottom part of this projector maybe even take it up to uh, to the edge here maybe a bit higher so I get the whole floor and you guess as well we want it to be just at it so it's over the top we might even want to make it a bit more transparent or if that certainly change the colors so I'm changing the colors just to give it a, a more interesting effect the other thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this graphic here this quad and I'm going to um, if I make sure I do select this one and not the uh, background so I'll just quickly I can turn them off to see what I'm doing but it should be just this one on the top here and that's not right because I've got the sound file here so what do I need to do if I want to get that eye it was right at the bottom here so just click it uh, sorry the next one up uh, that's it there and I'm going to drag this one over and I'm going to put it just here now I might not be doing this particularly correctly in terms of how it fits I just really want to show you how this works with some of the cool new tools and just line that up and then I'm going to add one more quad in which is going to be the eye again and I'm just going to take this back to this side back to the side where it sort of belongs and uh, I'm just going to put it in there whether it's right or not it doesn't matter give it um, a little bit of color here that's better in fact I might come to this right hand side and make this a different color as well so we, we oops make sure I get the right one and click on that quad there which is the first one should be good and so I've got my color there that's great now I'm going to come down here and just click um, the add scene now I can give this instead of scene one scene two I can give it a name as well but what I want to do is just make that three seconds as well and now I'll make sure I'm just going to come up here and save the project so having nothing in place we've now created some interesting scenery I'm just going to get rid of this um, first input quad I just want the output so we can see it clearly so I can just turn that off um, or oh, sorry turn the other one off so I've just got this full one and I just go in there to fit or well, not the not the selected quad but um, the scene and now I want to just show you how this works between the two so what I want to do is just deselect any quad at the moment and if I click back down here and click on my scene one there it is animating back to the side I click back here and now it's going back to the full version so I could have changed this around as much as I wanted to but you can see how you can really play with the illusion of what's actually happening in that space um, I, obviously this is just in the program not being projected but that's just an indication of what you can do with the program particularly using this fantastic Q feature we've got two here imagine what you can, you've got when you've got a whole scene or setting all your plays up so thank you so much for watching and that's just a little bit of an indication of just one of the many things you can do um, with Mad Mapper